How's it folks? After 6 months, patch 1.2 is finally leaving the beta and has just gone live. There is a lot of changes and bug fixes in this massive patch, so I'm not going to go through all of that or we will be here for hours. Instead, I will highlight what I think are the major changes and additions and I will link the full patch notes in the description in case you are looking for a specific fix. I will be going in a sort of chronological order, beginning with beta 1.2 and ending with 1.27, which is the final patch and the current live version. A quick reminder that this will likely make a number of mods out of date, so either wait to update the game or wait for the mods to update before continuing your campaign. With that out of the way, let's get started with the 1.2 changes and some specific console changes to start off with. They have added DualSense support for the PS5 version and PS4 saves can now be converted to PS5 saves. They have also added 15 cheats for the consoles. They can be enabled through the campaign options or by holding left bumper plus the right trigger plus D-pad down. Just bear in mind that this will also disable achievements. Siege ladders can be pushed down by both the AI and players and you can stop it by either climbing too high or by attacking the one trying to push the ladder down. The AI will fight less recklessly and block and try and increase the duration of combat. An NPC now recognizes the player in their initial conversation if the player has positive or negative relation with them even if they don't have high renown. They also included a whole bunch of main and issue quest fixes. Added a 36 hour cooldown before a hideout could become infested again. Crafted weapons with modifiers now have their parameters increased or decreased based on the modifier values instead of randomly. And a weapon modifier is now added based on the item's crafted difficulty and the crafting skill going from poor, inferior, common, fine, masterwork until it gets to legendary. Warehouses have been introduced allowing you to store items and workshops to take and place crafted items directly into the warehouse's storage. Kingdom destruction is now possible and kingdoms that lose all of their feasts will no longer linger around, instead they will get destroyed. The clans become independent and can either join another kingdom or wither away and disappear. A small number of combat skills have been added to otherwise one-dimensional companions. Children now have random personality traits instead of directly inheriting them from their parents. Roguery XP from donating prisoners now takes into account the tier of the prisoner as well. A significant amount of changes have been made to various perks. The birth and aging option is now available to all consoles. They have changed how the fog of war works and you will need to encounter clan members or pay innkeepers to reveal their details. Formation targeting now lets you choose a specific formation and make them target whoever you want. For instance, this will allow you to encircle the enemy and let your cavalry focus on the enemy missile troops instead of a general charge command and them bunching up in the middle of the infantry. Auto battle calculations have been changed, so the terrain will now provide bonuses or penalties depending on where the fight is taking place. Income and expenses are now grouped and displayed in categories. You can receive a pop-up when one of your clan members receive a marriage offer. Weather and weather effects have been added and they will affect your army's performance in battle. Added 6 new battle terrains and 4 new banded hardout scenes. And that is basically all the major changes in the 1.2 beta. 1.21 was basically a bunch of bug and crash fixes that was fairly consistent with the rest of the beta patches, but nothing else was notable in the 1.2 beta. 1.22 also had a couple of bug and crash fixes, but it also reduced memory usage in longer play sessions and changed the Firebrand's perk effect from minus 50% to minus 25% influence cost to initiate kingdom decisions. 1.23 changed legendary and master work crafting requirements such that you'll need to use a minimum amount of high tier parts to get one of those modifiers. It also reduced spacing of troops in square formation to make it more effective against cavalry. 1.24 made a fairly large number of changes to combat and the damage calculations, especially making infantry more aggressive against cavalry. 1.25 focused a bit more on garrisons and balancing them, including adding militia to newly conquered settlements and changing the calculation for militia recruitment. 
it also reduced memory usage in larger scenes. 1.26 added an in-game admin panel and admin features for dedicated servers in multiplayer. 1.27 combined all the beta branches into the new live branch, replacing 1.16 and that was pretty much it for it. There was also a bunch of changes made for modders but I didn't understand any of it so I wasn't sure what should have been included. But hopefully the modders consider the current live branch as the stable one to update the mods to as with all these changes, especially the kingdom destruction, it is difficult to go back to the older versions. Other than that, it is pretty much all there is to this new massive patch. I hope you all have a fantastic day, take care and cheers for now.